What is going on YouTube? You're here from MJ Tech. Today coming with the unboxing and the hands-on review of the Pixel 6 Pro that I've been using now for the past two weeks and a half, approximately. And so in that time, my daughter's birth came into play, which was October 26. And I had the privilege to use here the Pixel 6 Pro as my main camera shooter. And I can tell you that I'm not disappointed whatsoever. It is not a perfect phone, and by the way, I will try to keep this review as transparent as possible, uh, trying to avoid all the technical stuff. I know a lot of you just want to know how good the device is in a much simpler way. And that's exactly what I'm going to try to do here. So the phone was provided to me thanks to hashtag Team Pixel, and they have done it for the past couple of years. And this time they did it as well. They didn't pay for this review, so everything that you guys will hear is absolutely uh, either my own opinion or facts about the phone, so just be ready for that as well. Anyways, here we have the case, and at first, I didn't like the green color much, but then it kind of blend in. Uh, thanks that I got here the cloudy white, so I think that green and kind of like that cream color uh, makes it look uh, pretty good. So this is the case that I got from them as well. And again, it was much appreciated just because of the fact that when this phone was sent to me, it was a little early, so cases were not available yet. And that was my fear because with the Pixel 5a, I didn't get a case. And uh, yeah, that was a little, you know, a little challenge. But I think that with the 5a, cases were already available even before the release of the phone, which was great. So anyways, here we have the hashtag Team Pixel, and this is the cloudy white 6.7 inch 128 gigabytes. You know that now we have the new Tensor chip, and for the GPU, it comes with the Mali G78, which is new for me as well. It comes with Android 12, which is the latest Android uh, up until now, of course. And it has a whole bunch of other great features, including 12 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, so we have a lot of RAM on here. And this is a total redesign of the other Pixels that we have seen in the past. A lot of people were complaining that, well, the Pixels were great phones, but they had this just simple look into them that made them look like mid-range devices instead of flagships. But for the first time here, Google has done a very good job, I would say, in my opinion, based on what I see here in the design and the overall look of the device. And I think that this will definitely be a game changer for them as well. So inside of the box here, we just have the type A adapter here, the USB type A with the USB C cable. And we have here some manuals as well. We don't get the power break, unfortunately, that you have to purchase yourself. By the way, this phone can charge up to 30 watts maximum. That's using the wire and wirelessly up to 24 watts. So anyways, I already used the device and peeled this off already. I've been using it, like I said, for the past two weeks and a half. And even though I saw some flaws into it, I think a lot of it can be fixed with software, but I saw a few that I don't think that can be fixed with software. And so as we are getting this started, I'm gonna mention the flaws right now. The battery, I think it could improve. That could be fixed maybe with software. Now, this particular display is a 6.7 inch, like I said before. It has a 2K resolution with curved edges. Now, here's where the problem starts. The curved edges, they kind of change the colors. I'm not sure if you can see this here in the corner, but they do distort the colors a little bit. And, you know, in my opinion, I think that curved displays are getting out of style just a little bit. Even though it looks great, it looks, it gives you that 3D effects and also has very minimalistic bezels all the way around. I wish that Maybe they could have uh, implemented here a flat display. I think that would have been a lot better, but this one is still a good display. It's an AMOLED panel as well. And it has over 500 PPI, which is great. And this does support HDR 10 plus. So it makes those colors look amazing. So yes, that's that for the display. And here I'm entering my passcode real quick. I just want to show you that um, another thing that you know, I didn't like so much about this particular device. It has to do here with the fingerprint. As you saw, I have to leave it just a little bit too long before it reacts to what I'm doing here. So I think that this again can be fixed easily with software as well. So, so far the battery can be fixed with software up to a certain extent. By the way, this is a 5,003 power million battery. The fingerprint can also be fixed with software. 
but the, I think the only thing that cannot be fixed here easily is the distortion here on the curves of the display. Now let's talk about the good things on the Pixel. I do love the software. This is Android 12 as we know already. And they are promising security updates up to five years, which is definitely something that I was looking forward to see on Android specifically. So yes, I did perform. Um, I wanted to test that Tensor chip and just like MKBHD said on his video, benchmarks are not everything. It doesn't really judge a device in terms of usability, but it does give you a rough idea on how well things are performing. So I went ahead and downloaded here the Antutu benchmark in which uh, this is the score right here that I got, 698,000. That's definitely a flagship score. However, it is not as I thought it was going to perform in terms of scoring. I thought that this new uh, processor, the Tensor chip, was gonna do a lot better. But here we can see certain information about the device already. We get here the Mali G78. Um, again, 1440 resolution on the rear. We have a couple different camera setups. We get a 50 megapixel uh, wide angle lens. Then we get a 48 telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Okay, comes with the LED flash. We get here the secondary microphone. And by the way, here on the side, we have uh, what is called the aluminum frame. And here we can see the SIM card. This can only hold one SIM card at a time and it doesn't have memory expansion. We get the speaker and the microphone with the USB-C. By the way, this does support stereo speakers, which is great. We get here on the right side, the volume rockers up and down with the power key. And of course we have that on-screen fingerprint now. So before we used to have it on the back, that is no longer there. And we have one of the latest Corning Gorilla glasses as well here for the front and the back. And in the back, it does have this coating that keeps the fingerprints away. And I do like that quite a bunch. The phone, like I said, it has a lot of great features. I love the software. I love the cameras. They're not perfect. This camera is powered by a lot of software. Okay, so yes, the sensors are big. Yes, everything looks good on paper, but mainly what does the job is the software. And we're gonna be talking about that here in just a second. So anyways, coming back here to the Antutu benchmark. So yes, gave it a pretty good score. So here we have all the details of the cameras and even the display here, we have 512 PPI, like I said before, it is a little bit more than 500, which is great. And I almost forgot 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now this is adaptive, just like we saw with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It goes down to 10 all the way up to 120 Hertz depending on what you're using it for. So of course I play games on this device and it is no surprise that it did perform well. It didn't get hot, which is great. And yes, I played things like Ospo 9. I did Beach Buggy Racing as well. And that performed as we would expect on a $899 phone. Now, the battery. Okay, here's a big thing about the battery. And well, like I mentioned before, it doesn't last as much as I thought it was gonna last. The battery can definitely be fixed with software, adjusting a few things, maybe on the processor itself. Keep in mind that this is the new Tensor chip, so that makes it a little easier for them to fix certain problems. Like for example, the battery. This device hardly takes me throughout the whole entire day using it at the same rate that I do with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and that's a problem. That's the first time I see a device with the 5,003 or 5,000 plus million battery and that I'm not able to go throughout the whole entire day. That was a big, big bummer. So on the other hand, the connectivity here for the service, I'm using Verizon and I am getting 4G LTE. Something I noticed here about the toggles getting into it now is that now we cannot just turn off the Wi-Fi. We had to click on that square toggle then it takes me here, and then that's an extra step. Then I can turn off the Wi-Fi. But anyways, I did this just to show you that I am getting 5G support. And yes, the phone does work great with the networks, making phone calls. Everything is super clear. It works very, very well, actually. The phone also has a couple of like hidden features. And one of them that I like is one that I saw here from settings. If we scroll all the way to the bottom here, where it says about, or excuse me, system, and then we go into gestures. Right on here, we have this feature, which is turn off by default. 
and it's called uh, Quick Tap. Now on Quick Tap, you can only choose one of these options. Then you can take a screenshot, you can access the digital assistant, you can play and pause music, you can do a whole bunch of things. In this particular case, I found it useful using it for the screenshot. So for example, if I am holding the device, let's say this is the image that I want to screenshot, all I gotta do is just double tap on the back and check that out. It took a screenshot. So it has a couple of things like that that makes a difference, just like we see with iOS and other platforms out there. They usually have their own little tweaks that makes a difference, and I think that's one of them. So these are the great things about the Pixel. It's also IP68 certified, so it can go up to 1.5 meters of depth in terms of water and hold it for about 30 minutes maximum. And of course, we have the camera. So the camera, again, I'm not gonna jump into the technical part of it. I'm just gonna keep it simple. It takes amazing photos. Is it perfect? Of course not. Will it improve? I'm hoping so, and I know that it will, because that's what Google's all about. It's software support, updates, and yes, it's just gonna get a lot better. So we have here recording up to 4K at 60 frames per second. We can change that here if we go into videos, then we go into settings. You can see it right here. We can go 4K and then we can change the frames. So right there we can see we have it at 60 frames per second. We have very simple settings on here, flash, on and off. Again, the resolution. I like to record personally at 1080p just because of the fact that, well, I do have a 120 gigabyte phone. So recording at 4K is just going to deplete my memory very quickly. So we have up to four times of optical zoom, and I believe it goes 28 times uh, digital zoom. So that's the maximum we can do on this device, which is really cool. And again, overall, it is a great, great sensor. At nighttime, it's gonna shoot awesome pictures. And if you thought that the other pixels were great, again, this is gonna be a lot better in many different ways. On the front side here, we have that 11 megapixel ultra wide sensor, now able to record in 4K 30 frames per second. Awesome sensor, I love it. It has that ultra wide as well. So taking selfies with families and friends, it's gonna make it very easy and very pleasurable as well. So I'm gonna leave it at that for the camera. Of course, as I was talking about it, you saw some of the image that I took with this device, including my new daughter, which her name is Nicole, by the way. And yes, I took pictures, I trusted this device, I knew it was gonna do great, and that's exactly what it did. Also something that I wanna show you here from the Pixel 6 Pro is the capabilities of the loudspeakers. I really hope that my camera and my microphone is able to capture this, but I think that honestly, these speakers are a little bit more impressive than on the iPhone 13 Pro Max when it comes to watching movies. In this particular case, I'm using YouTube to play this trailer, Venom trailer, so that way you can kind of get a glance on how well they sound. So here we go. Well guys, there we have it for an entirely redesigned Google Pixel 6 Pro. I gotta say that I mainly love this device with the exception of, well, just those minor flaws that I noticed. I think the ones that cannot be fixed is, like I said before, the distortion here on the edges of the screen, which is nothing major. A lot of people might not even notice it. I did notice it when scrolling through pages especially hitting that little curve right there. Colors do look a little bit different, but you can mostly see it when there's a complete dark environment. And second, we cannot fix the fact that this is a 30 watt charging device. They should have made it at least 60 watts, considering what's out there in the market. So that would have made them a little bit more competitive. We know that a lot of us like to get that quick charge, just like we see with the iPhones and the Samsungs. Again, that would have made them a little bit more competitive, but nevertheless, this is a very, very good device in many different aspects. We are promised to get five years of security updates, which is amazing. 
and overall i like the design of this device i think it looks premium it looks really really nice and i just want you guys to let me know what you think about the pixel 6 pro and if there's anything else that i can bring for you guys as testings and things of that nature here with the pixel 6 pro with this being said thank you so much for watching like the video subscribe for more click on the bell icon and i will see you guys on my next one